Welcome and good evening, everybody. It is November 15th. It's about 6.42. Uh, my main guy, Billy Ray, and I are sitting down to, uh, to record this week's Sons of Saturday's Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Whitley's Peanuts. Billy Ray, what's, uh, what's going on, man? How are you? Just finished my move from Newport uh, to Westwood, New Jersey. Uh, or stopping in Westwood, New Jersey real quick. It's cold, as you can see with my, my hat choice. Uh, just finished up a run and uh, excited to uh, chop it up. And Jackson's cooking pork chops. So I got pork chops after this. Looking forward to that, too. I was about to say, I felt like the, the chopped it up, chop it up was, was carefully picked. Uh, my name is uh, Bryce Chalkley, and we're the, we're the usual suspects here for the Athlete of the Week podcast. Uh, we got a special guest here today. We're really excited about it. Uh, before we announce him, I'll give you a little teaser on who it is. Um, this, this person's the starting point guard for three, no men's basketball team. He's averaging 20 points per game, just under five assists and averaging 50% from behind the arc. If you guessed Sean Padula, you would be right. Sean, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, just chilling here on a Tuesday night in Blacksburg. Uh, nothing much going on. So I'm doing great. A, a cold, chilly night as yeah. that. we were talking about how, how bad the weather is. I, I miss the summer. Um, so, Sean, um, first, you know, congrats on uh, the start to the season and being selected this this uh, this week's Athlete of the Week for your performances and y'all's wins against Lehigh on Thursday and then William & Mary two nights ago. So we like to start uh, this this series with, you know, the same question each time. You know, we want to know why Virginia Tech. Yeah. How did Mike Young come into Edmond, Oklahoma <clears throat> and pull you to Blacksburg? Yeah, so – it was kind of a mix of different coaches that were, were on the staff and are on the staff now that kind of like reached out to me early whenever I was uh, about a junior, I think, is when they first started reaching out to me. And uh, they just kind of sold me on like what it is here and the environment and the kind of the culture. And uh, I just really like fell in love with it from the first Zoom call. I, it's kind of funny, like I never got a chance to take any like official visits or anything because of COVID, but um, like just going through Zoom calls and like virtual visits uh, and then I, I took a visit by myself, me and my parents. Um, and we came up here during like August of my senior year, right before my senior year of high school started. And I just loved it from that moment on. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say the coach young and all the other coaches that were recruiting me here, uh, they just, they just obviously showed how much interest they had in me. And, uh, they, they basically sold me on the future that I could have here. So I've loved it so far. Can you tell me a little bit about what the Zoom recruiting deal was like? I mean, is Coach Young walking around campus with his phone showing you buildings? Like, how, how does that? How did that work? Yeah, it was really weird. Like, usually how it went, and this was it was kind of the same across a bunch of different schools because everyone was kind of new to it. Everyone didn't really know how to recruit via Zoom. So, the first Zoom call was kind of just like getting to know everybody, and it was kind of like just like putting a name with a face. Uh, so it was kind of just the whole coaching staff, strength coach, trainer, all of them on the Zoom call. And I was kind of just introducing myself, and they were, like, kind of talking me through, like, what each of their own positions uh, require and stuff like that. And then uh, we had another Zoom call just about, like, what it's like at Virginia Tech, just the different uh, buildings, stuff like that, um, the equipment, like, just basically pictures of, of everything. And uh, – that was when he offered me – actually, Coach Young offered me a scholarship the first Zoom we were on. And then after that, uh, it kind of just got better and better. Like, uh, our relationship grew. But, yeah, you can't really, like – you don't really get the same effect as, as seeing something in person. And so um, that's why I kind of wanted to come up here, but like, it by myself, just because I didn't want to go somewhere across the country without even, even seeing it in person yet. So, uh, yeah, the best they could do was just show pictures, videos – like YouTube videos, just kind of promoting it. But uh, I kind of had to get like a real life experience before I before I uh, took that leap. If you were, I, I know that you went to, you had a bunch of different schools. And last one on on this topic that I have, <clears throat> if you left the school out, was there any like weird or like bad Zoom meeting or Zoom recruiting? I, I can't imagine that those all went perfect. So, do you have any stories from from that uh, from that experience? With uh, different schools or just altogether? Different schools, yeah. And leave the school out. Leave the school yeah, out. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say. Um, yeah, I'm obviously not going to say like any school in particular, but there were some that was just that were more awkward than others. And you could tell like there were some schools that – and it, it wasn't even that it was bad. It was just that 
some coaches are more comfortable face to face, and you can kind of just tell that that they like via Zoom, it wasn't their best. Like I know me myself personally, I'm not the best like face to face, but I feel like there's less pressure over the phone. So I feel like that was kind of the opposite for some coaches. I feel like it was more stressful for some of the old school guys. But like they need, it's better to see you face to face. But Coach Young was wasn't like that. Like he was really, he's a really talkable guy. So um, I wouldn't say there was any bad experiences that I specifically remember. But there were just some coaches that were like it just wasn't their their cup of tea. So and you can't blame him for that. Like no one was really expecting that to go down. So yeah. Yeah, could you could you imagine losing like a high profile recruit because of bad Wi Fi? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, like it was kind of funny. There was some, I forget, what, I don't even remember what school it was, but we literally had to cancel because like there was a th- there was a, a rainstorm in Edmond, Oklahoma, where I'm from, and I like I literally had no internet. I was like, I'm just texting. I was like, yeah, like, I can't even, like it's this just not working tonight. So, yeah, I, I bet it, I, did, I bet it impacted some more than others for sure. The, the last question I, I wanted to ask here, and we, we can move on, is were, were you looking to kind of go anywhere? Was was proximity to home a big deal when you initially started and you fell in love in Blacksburg? Or, you know, what what were, I guess, what was, was you know, was that a, was that a big thing? You or? It, Bryce. Oklahoma's weird. Oklahoma's no, a long it's, no, it's a long <laughs> way from here. It's not kind of the, it's not typical. Someone to come all the way to Virginia from yeah, Oklahoma. I, I just want to know how it happened. I mean, I know yeah. Mike Young's the man, but I just, mm-hmm. I just wanted more insight there, I guess. Yeah, there was definitely a couple different things that kind of went into it. Like, I, I think everyone like understands the perks of being close to, to home and like go being able to go home and get a home cooked meal would be really nice every once in a while. But like, and my parents kind of, and older siblings did a good job of kind of explaining this to me. Like, I think you should not go to, to the best option possible just because of where it is, like the distance. So that was kind of one of the main things. And then like my older siblings, a couple of them went to school in Ohio. So like that's somewhat of a long distance too. And, and like another aspect was just that going to a new school and kind of like starting over and getting like a new rep, if you will, not that I had a bad rep or anything in high school, but like, it's just something that there's something refreshing about starting over and just meeting new people and just going into a place brand new. So it was kind of just a mixture of all those things. And like Oklahoma state who I was also getting recruited by that would all, that would have been awesome. Like I would have been there with a ton of my uh, childhood friends and I would have been close to home, but you know, like sometimes it's not, that's not what it's always about. So it was tough, like making that big uh, leap to come all the way over here. But like, I think it's paid off so far. That's great. So I, I think this next this next question is actually probably part of that answer. And you already alluded alluded to it saying a couple of siblings. So Billy and I were, were checking out Hokie Sports, doing a little research before we hopped on with you. And we discovered that you were one of 10 siblings. One of nine. One of nine. One of nine. OK, yeah. so I'm, I'm Billy's rubbing off on me. I'm not as my, my math is. Well, I, sharp. Think, I think actually like if you I don't know if you guys looked at like the Hokies bio or whatever. Yeah, I think whenever I filled out that questionnaire, whenever that was, I think I included one of 10. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I think it was like, I think the question was like, include all your siblings. And I included one of my in-laws. So it, so it has like, and it's kind of funny. My family kind of got like, they weren't actually mad, but they sent a little, whenever that thing came out, they sent a group and a text in the group chat. They're like, why didn't I get a shout out? Because only one of the in-laws got a shout out to that. So yeah, I'm only one of nine plus the in-laws. Um, so my math is better than Billy's. Thank you yes. for confirming. That. I <laughs> yeah, appreciate that's that. what that means. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, that is, that is obviously a very different childhood than most people. Yeah. Um, where, where did you fall in the ranking of siblings? You mentioned a couple older. Are you, are you the, don't tell me you're the youngest. I'm, I'm close to the youngest. I'm the third youngest. So I'm the seventh of, of nine. Okay. Okay, I can see where maybe some of the scrappiness comes from, but yeah, yeah we we just wanted to ask, you know, how, how was like like growing up, and you know, I'm sure that led to you got a chance to go all the way to Virginia. You're like, I'm out. I need a break. I need my own room. <laughs> you run basketball, that, yeah. you run basketball tournaments with your with your siblings. You could yeah. do you know three we, three. Yeah, we, all, we <laughs> almost got, got to play five on five, five, on five yeah. full court. It almost if it wasn't for a couple of my sisters, we could have done four on four too. But some of them didn't really get, like get in play, so. No, but yeah, I'd say growing up, it was definitely a cool experience and a unique experience that not a lot of people get to kind of understand. But uh, I definitely loved it. It's like a never a dull moment. 
um, always someone to talk to. And it kind of just goes back both ways. Like there's times where you're like, man, I wish there was just some downtime, but then, you know, you, you just learn to love it. So uh, I feel like I, I, if I ever have a problem, I've always have someone, I've always had someone to go to and talk to about whatever the matter is. So yeah, that's, that's one aspect that I wouldn't trade for the world, but uh, growing up was definitely chaotic at times. And I was always surrounded by basketball. Like I, I almost all my older siblings played basketball or football or some other sport. So going to their tournaments or going to their, like one of my sisters was an uh, Irish dancer. So going to like dance recitals, I was just always around the, the, the most random things. So I definitely got to experience like a wide variety of sports and activities and basketball was just the thing that I enjoyed the most. And like a lot of my brothers, I'd say that was like the number one sport that we all played together. So, uh, yeah, I'd say they, I definitely say that, uh, Growing up with a bunch of siblings definitely makes it better competitively for uh, sports. So we, uh, JJ Padula is, is uh, he's a big Saturday follower. A lot of replies, a lot of likes, always writing in. Ed Williams he's is always character. getting. Yes, he is. Uh, and he tweeted at us when he found out that you were coming on the show. And uh, he said, pretty good start to the season, but the bros want to know if, and you're going to have to pr- help me with pronunciation, Kieran. at Sierra. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I was not going to say Sierra. That's the only one of my, that's the only one of my siblings that no one ever knows how to pronounce. So he wants, uh, JJ wants to know is Sierra and himself, the only Padula brothers that can dunk right now. There's a couple of things wrong with that question. One is that JJ himself isn't even close to dunking. Like I, <laughs> I, don't, I think he was able to dunk once in his career. Okay. But, uh, yeah, he's a little past that, but, uh, and a couple of LBs too heavy, but, uh, <laughs> No, nah, he's Kieran, – Kieran's actually my little brother who's a junior in high school now, I believe. And yeah, he actually can dunk pretty well. But he's just doing that because I haven't had an in-game dunk this year yet. So he's just giving me a hard time. But um, um, So so we can dunk. Yeah, I can dunk. I can dunk. If you ever watch warm-ups. But... Do, do we need like a breakaway or are we going to slam it on <laughs> it, somebody? Because <laughs> I'm here for it. Let's do I, it. I think, I think if I – could bang on somebody that you guys that you guys would know by now because i would have tried but uh it's gotta be i'm not gonna lie it's gotta be a a pretty good situation but i'm I'm capable i'd say okay uh before we dive into this year we always have to bring up last year's special run i know you guys raised the banner banner can you give me one core memory that you will take away from that experience whether it be during the tournament run whether it be during the beginning of the season whatever is there a core memory that sticks out to you from that year uh, I would say there, there's obviously a ton, and there was a ton of different games where it was like highs and lows. But one of the most enjoyable ones was when we beat Miami at Miami, and just the locker room after that game. We were like, I think that was like the biggest celebration, other than the ACC tournament of just like just pure joy, just because everyone was so excited. We needed that win. It was a big win on the road, and it was kind of like a little revenge game because Miami beat us earlier on the season off of a buzzer beater. So that was definitely one memory in particular that was just really rewarding. And it was just like, like I said, pure joy. Everyone was super excited. So, uh, and it was in Miami, like it was a super cool place. And that was my first time there. So that was definitely uh, one of the better road game experiences. So talking about this year uh, and you were talking about, you know, JJ and the LBs, but it's hard not (laughs) to notice the difference in your game and the difference in the way that you look. Um, How hard was Coach Jackson and everybody in the weight room with you this summer. Uh, what were some of your goals over the summertime? Um, just kind of tell us a little bit about your development during the off season. Yeah, I mean, Jax. I don't know how much you know about Coach Jax, but he's like he's always hard on people. But he, he wasn't like like specifically like hard on me because I needed to improve in any specific asset as far as like my body. But I kind of just told him like at the beginning of the year that like seeing some of these NBA guards and some of these bigger guards that use their body so well, I know that like they're, they are kind of stockier and they kind of like basically manipulate good, the guards that they're going up against. And I thought that was something that I didn't really do last year. Like I didn't really impose my will uh, physically on anybody. And I think uh, that I kind of just told him, I was like, I want to be able to like not be like bumped off the line and like not be able to be pushed around like, like, like I was a little bit last year. He was like, all right, well, you're probably gonna have to gain five to ten pounds. So that's basically what I did. And like, I was, I was, I'd say I was strong last year, but I definitely say like my core and my lower body and all that has definitely gotten uh, 
more stable this year. So I, I love that. So you weren't told you weren't told to put on <laughs> or anything else. You you observed that as something in your game that you wanted to improve upon and uh you went ahead and you did it. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean I was just seeing like if you look at some of the best NBA guards like Chris Paul, Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, they're all they may not look like, but their core and like their lower body is super strong. And you never see them get like physically imposed upon. So that was just something I thought I thought I could add to my game and it's just something that's constantly improving. So that's great. So so now that we got the the beefier, stronger Sean Padula, um, <laughs> you guys are off to to a great start this year. As mentioned before, you're averaging twenty points per game. You're, you, you know, you're taking on the starting point guard role. You're making it your own. The team is, is off to a 3-0 and start. How would you rate your performance so far? Um, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm pleased uh, so far, but I'm not really, like, satisfied. I think uh, there's a lot to come. There's a lot to show whenever we start playing these bigger and uh, better schools. Um, but I'd say I, I've managed the team well thus far. I've taken care of the ball. That was, like, one of the, mo- the main – areas I was trying to focus in on. Um, so I'd say in that aspect, but I, but I definitely say there's room to improve. Um, there's some shots that I, I probably should have taken some defensive plays that I've kind of gotten lost on. Uh, so like there's, there's always areas to improve, but I'd say so far I've, I've done. Okay. I love how you immediately told me all the things you need to work on. Um, yeah. that's, that's great. That kind of segues perfectly into the next question too. I was going to ask, you know, as the, uh, from a team perspective, what is one thing y'all think you think you're doing really well right now? And what is the one thing y'all really think y'all can improve on? It's kind of, I think it, the question kind of like the answer goes hand in hand. It's like offensively, I think we're like the most unselfish team I've, that, I've, that I personally have ever played for. Like everyone's just so willing to make an extra pass and get like your teammate open or get an open shot. And then, Conversely, defensively, it's not that we're unselfish, but we're like over helping whenever a teammate gets a driven pass or something, and we're just like breaking down defensively. So I'd say, offensively, I'd say we're doing really well, just sharing the ball and and being uh, unselfish and sharing that chemistry. But I'd say something we need to improve upon is definitely uh, on the defensive end, just kind of like staying in front of your man. And then if someone does get beat, just like make the appropriate rotations. So. I think that's beating us pretty early, but uh, something we can definitely improve on. I, I'm glad you mentioned the offense part. It seems like everybody loves tuning in to watch y'all's game to to see all the offensive stars that you have. How, you know how how do y'all navigate in the, that in the game with with so many guys that can score points? Um, are you feeding the hot hand? Or are you trying to get the ball to the guys to get them in rhythm? Or how has you know, Mike Young and the rest of the coaching staff um, navigated that um, this year. And, yeah. Yeah, I'd say the coaching staff obviously does a great job of putting us in position and spots to get the best shot available. But I wouldn't say they, they're, they like, focusing in on anyone in particular to get this shot or that shot. It's just more of us playing together and being conscious and aware of who's who likes this shot and where he likes to shoot it from. And uh, it's just kind of like the more we play together, the more we realize where those people like to shoot. And, uh, like, it's pretty easy to realize once Grant hits two or three in a row, like, just, just look for him next time down the court. So, uh, and then on top of that, when you have three or four other people that can do the same thing, it's like it just makes the game really easy and really easy to play with those guys. So <clears throat> I just say, game, like, every game we're just getting more comfortable with each other. And uh, the coaches are definitely just realizing that and putting us in position, adding new plays, adding new pieces just to uh, make that comfortability just a little bit more uh, frequent, I guess. Yeah. So last two that we have before uh, our last segment, Rapid Fire. I first want to ask you about Rodney Rice. He's a player a lot of uh, folks were excited to see going into the season. Uh, what can we expect out of him when he does get back on the court from what you've seen this off season, and what type of relationship do you have with him? Yeah, I'd say what to expect from him is just – He's just a really poised player and, like, a very mature player. And it was something that kind of caught me off guard this summer. I was just like, this dude looks like he's been playing college for, like, a couple of years now. Like, he's just he, – no matter what you throw at him, it doesn't seem like he gets uncomfortable at all. 
and he's also just like a super smooth kind of like Darius, just like a super smooth. It looks like it looks like he's never in an uncomfortable position on the court, and uh, he makes really difficult shots look really easy. So he's just a really talented overall player, and it's definitely uh, definitely looking forward to having him back out there and playing with him. And uh, we have, we have a good relationship, I'd say. Um, we both get along, and he it's kind of weird. Like I'm not used to uh, like not playing with him just because he's been injured for a little while. But uh, I'd say on the court, we just have a good relationship as well, just sharing the ball and uh, know where we, we like to catch and shoot. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to seeing him back out there. And one of that leads into this question is one of my favorite things to – look, people say stupid things. People like to infer. Last year in the middle of the season when you started getting more minutes, uh, a lot of people kind of leaned into saying – Oh man, I wonder. Storm Storm Murphy definitely doesn't like Sean Padula. Sean Padula definitely doesn't like Storm Murphy, which is obviously a dumb thing. That's not yeah. true. I just want to talk a little bit about what kind of relationship you had and how you guys pushed each other and made each other better last year. Yeah, I mean, if like if you've ever met Storm, like it's 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 hard to not like him. Like he just always got a smile on his face, and he's always just in a great mood. It just rubs off on everybody's around. And like even if he wasn't like that, like there were just because we were like competing for minutes at, at some parts of the year, like that's never a reason to not like your team. You know what I'm saying? So like there was never a moment last year where I like our friendship or whatever was like I don't know on the brink just because we were competing for minutes. So and we were we were roommates on the road for away games, so we were always around each other. And we were, we were like one of our best. He was one of my best friends on the team last year. And I still like talk to him and text him every once in a while. So, like you said, people say stupid things, but uh, there was times last year where it was kind of just like weird, just because you like we both kind of knew that people were were like just talking like trash to him basically all the time, and like I I didn't feel like it was my place to kind of like encourage him just because of the position that I was in, but I kind of just tried to do my best just to like keep that friendship there and just try not to make it awkward. So. I'd, I'd say our friendship was really good. And like I say, he's such an enjoyable person to be around. So uh, our friendship never, never wavered really. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that. It just, it kind of goes into the, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times the things that people say <coughs> when they infer on things, one student athletes see that they're on yeah. social media, they read it. Um, and you don't know what kind of impact that may have, may not have, or if you're just saying something that's blatantly untrue. So I do appreciate I yeah. uh, appreciate you shining a light on that. And we're going to move into the fun and final segment of our podcast. But before we do that, we do want to remind everybody this podcast is brought to you by Whitley's Peanuts. Uh, 10% off of your first order if you use code. Is it is it Suns 10, Bryce? Which one is it? Uh, SOS. Use code SOS for 10% off of your first order at Whitley's Peanut. You're looking for a Christmas gift, looking for something for Hanukkah, looking for something for the table, a little garnish on there for Thanksgiving. The peanut clusters are fantastic. Yeah. So go ahead, check them out. Generations of Hokies, a Hokie-owned business. You can get them in Lane Stadium. So whitleyspeanut.com, use code SOS for 10% off. Rapid fire, Sean Padula. First question, everybody this. If you could have dinner with anybody, any four people, dead or alive, you can set this up to be a date. You can set this up to be to learn something about basketball. It is up to you. You're bringing four people to dinner, and you got to pick where you're going to dinner. All right. First and foremost, I'm going to I'm going to some sort of fancy steakhouse just because steak and mashed potatoes are probably my favorite meal. So I don't know whatever the fanciest steakhouse is out there. <laughs> I guess farm is it farmhouse here. That's, that's probably the best one I've been to. Here. We, we can we can move outside of. Oh, we can, <laughs> we can move go out wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Just Farm some fancy right steakhouse. Now. And then I'm going with uh, first person that came to mind is Kobe Bryant. Has got to be there. Um, I'm going. Who was the second person I had? I'm going Abraham Lincoln, second. I feel like that's a, that's a good person to That have. is the second time we've got Abraham Lincoln. Did Justin Mutt say Abraham yeah. Lincoln? Price? Justin yeah. said Abraham Lincoln? Wow, yeah, he did. Interesting. Uh, third person, I got to add some, like, I don't know. Each person got to add their own little, like, interesting smoke to the to the table. Um, <laughs> I had athlete, president. I'm going to go... 
what I think. Oh, I'm going. I'm going Derek Jeter just because he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. And then uh, that's two athletes. I can't do another athlete. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, do actor, director. Oh uh, yeah, scientist. Yeah. Oh, I'm going. Um, I know who it is. Denzel Washington. He's Denzel. My, he's my fourth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so you got yourself out of this one. I ask everybody. Um, you didn't set this up as a date, so you're really focused on learning. But I do want to ask you, who is your celebrity crush, Sean Padula? Celebrity crush is Blake Lively. Blake Lively, good That's pick. Good answer. Good yeah. Pick. Favorite non-basketball memory at Virginia Tech? Non-basketball memory at Virginia Tech? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Favorite charitable non basketball that, That's favorite. the one I want to hear. <laughs> uh, probably golfing with Mike Vick a couple months ago. That's that pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, that was one of the best ones. That's pretty cool. Best ones uh, I can say, yeah. Favorite place to eat at Virginia Tech? You can't say farmhouse. You already gave that away. No, no, that's not even my favorite place to eat. I'd say my favorite place to eat at Virginia Tech is uh, – hmm. What's some place I go a lot? Oh, probably cookout. That's something that's not in Oklahoma. So, I, like, the first two months of school here, I literally ate there, like, almost every day. What do you guys have in Oklahoma? Like, Bucky's? I drove through Oklahoma. No, we have a uh, – I think Bucky's is in Texas. But we have a Whataburger. Okay. Whataburger and uh, Cane's. Oh, Cane's. I wish Cane's was here. Cane's is good. Cane's is, like, the one restaurant that I, I crave so much here that I wish was here. Um, best and worst Thanksgiving side or just Thanksgiving food? Worst is green beans. That will that's like the worst yeah. side of all time. Like no matter what Thanksgiving or not. Best I'd say is stuffing. Okay. A good stuffing, yeah. You and Mutz have a lot of cross answers, <coughs> just letting you know. I don't know if you guys Y'all were both stuff. so quick to say your yeah. worst too. Yeah. It's like you had it right there neck on your hip. Stuffing stuffing is just so versatile. Like you can eat it with mashed potatoes, you can eat it with turkey. It's just like, and I'm a big fan of like combining foods when I eat it. So, uh, yeah, that's just the most versatile. Uh, so <coughs> not sure if you're aware, Georgia Amor, Liz Kitley, uh, we had them on, talked about Taylor Swift a little bit. They launched their own podcast, Queens of Castles. So check them out if you have not. Heard, heard. They're fantastic. So I want to ask you, do you have a, fa- a favorite Taylor Swift song? A favorite Taylor Swift song is uh, Love Story. Love Story. Got to yeah. have that one ready to go too. Yeah, uh, a- and then my uh, last one before I pass it over to Bryce. Do you have a pregame ritual? Putting your shoes on weird, um, you know, brushing your teeth. Dax Hollifield told us he wears the same pair of uh, pink underwear. Um, so just curious what your pregame uh, pregame ritual is. <laughs> no, I know. Um, I'd, I'd say I do the same things before every game, but nothing like a ritual, if that's what you're asking. Like no – same sock, like good luck charm, nothing like that. No. So what do you do that's the same before every game? Like I go through my routine, like shooting. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I say a prayer before every, every game. I get like a, like a moment of silence just for a little bit just to like think. And like pregame, uh, I call them PGPs. You can probably guess what they are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like that type of stuff, same thing. But nothing like a ritual or good luck charm. PGPs, never heard of <laughs> Go ahead, Bryce. Our guys just eating steak and potatoes and scoring points. There's, there's no need for <laughs> pregame rituals. Um, who is the funniest guy on the team? The funniest guy on the team is uh, Lin Kidd. Lin Kidd? Yeah, definitely. Who who wins on a, in a dunk contest for this team? Lin Kidd. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Um, you mentioned him earlier, so I kind of wanted to ask, because I, I kind of want to put you on the spot. You and Grant's three-point contest. Me. Who wins? Me, oh okay. Yeah, he, he like Grant knows, I, and I have this thing that Grant will. I'll never give him like, like he knows that I'm just doing it just to mess with him. But I'll never give him like any like uh slight on me and shooting because I'll just be like, yeah, you like you had a good shot, but I'll hit more than your next game or something like <laughs> that. So I'll always, I'll always say, but like, obviously he's a great shooter, so it's just just for fun. Mm, so Grant, if you're <laughs> listening, Sean Sean says he's got you. Um, he, he knows I would say that. Like he wouldn't expect me to say no. So, okay, I like it. Um, this question <laughs> actually comes from another Grant, our our friend uh, Grant Watson, good friend of the pod. <coughs> who is a NBA? Who is 
the NBA, an NBA player that you admire the most? On, on the court or off the court? <laughs> Let's do both. Well, Kyrie Irving on the court is for sure. Uh, just because, like, I think growing up, I looked at, like, a lot of his finishing videos and how he, like, puts spin on the ball and stuff mm-hmm. and just how crafty he is. Uh, and then off the court, uh, who do I look up to off the court? Honestly, yeah, I don't know why I said off the court because, like, I feel like not a whole lot of NBA players nowadays do anything really significant off the court. Uh, but on the court, definitely Kyrie. Gotcha. Um, could have said that. I'll, I'll rephrase that for you. I love Kyrie Irving's basketball game. How about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. I love Kyrie Irving's basketball game. <laughs> um, if you could have a superpower, what would you want to have? You can't use it in basketball. This is just for pure, uh, pure fun. I'd, uh, being able to fly. Okay. I think that where would you fun. fly? Just anywhere. I wouldn't walk anywhere. <laughs> uh, to farmhouse, right? Um, that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, to cook um, So, uh, two more questions. I'll hand it back to Bill. Um, what? So, I, I, I feel like I, I've seen some nicknames floating around, and I, I, I wanted to hear from <coughs> you. What, what nickname do you have now, or what nickname would you like to have? Uh, I don't like. Uh... I feel like people on the team and like that are close to me just call me Dula for like Padula. And that's like, I, I like that one just because it's like kind of cool and chill. But um, like my nickname or my like hashtag on, on Instagram is like Chef Sean. Mm-hmm. And like going around campus, sometimes I'll just hear like Chef Sean, but it's like, I think it's like a joke. Like, I don't really <laughs> think it's like serious. So I always like laugh a little bit, but it's, I don't mind it. It's just funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sean. And, What's- um, this is the last one. This is actually uh, a question that my <coughs> wife um, came up with and we like to ask. What is something that people don't know about you? <coughs> uh, sorry, I'm coughing up this one. You got to fly down to CVS, get some lozenges. No, for real. Well, I was like just coming off the sickness and now it's like the phlegm and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, something people don't like about me is that I oh, don't know about me. Not, not like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm a big time uh, fishing guy. Not th- not that I'm like a pro or anything. I just I really enjoy fishing. Have so you I gone just, down to? Have you kayaked at all down at uh at the New River at all? I have not. One of our assistant coaches uh, said he's going to take me out there, but like during the summertime, whenever we're just here all summer, I literally just go fishing and golfing like almost every day of the week. You got to do that. I remember one of my favorite days. My brother came down um, when he was still in high school, and uh, Michael Brewer, me, and my brother got two kayaks and he drove his to the top of the river and we floated down for probably three or four hours. And between the three of us, we must've caught, we must've caught 70 or 80 smallmouth bass over the course of four hours, just doing some, uh, just doing some little, those, uh, jelly salamanders, but what a great, what a great time. You got to get out and do that over the summer. And also summertime in Blacksburg, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, trash it. Athletes used to be like in Blacksburg is so boring over the summer. It's actually probably there's not a better place to be in the summer than Blacksburg. It's very chill. I would yes. say. Bill yes. is a big buyer of Blacksburg summers. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a buyer of Blacksburg anytime except for November to like February. Um, <laughs> but, but no, but Sean, really appreciate your time. This has been great. Uh, our athlete of the week again, brought to you by Whitley's peanuts. This is your time. We let you uh, end the podcast. Do you have any shout outs, anything you'd like to plug at the end of the podcast? Uh, no shout outs, uh, but I appreciate you guys having me on. I've enjoyed it. Chef Sean, thanks for cooking it up with us today. Wow. That was just too smooth. of it. Of it. <laughs> so I'm good. impressed how you like transitioned that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was good. That's a he seasoned. Down down his hand. He definitely <laughs> was thinking about that the whole time. <laughs> appreciate it, Sean. Take care. Yep. See you guys.